Melvin, what did you think about the national championship game? Well, it's always kind of uh, like a fairy tale when you have two undefeated teams. Right. Uh, one of them uh, happened to have the current Heisman Trophy winner as a quarterback. So, uh, and they didn't disappoint. There was a lot of action in the game. I thought it was great, man. Yeah, well, you said they dis they didn't disappoint. <laughs> one of them might have disappointed a little bit. Was, Trevor Lawrence, who has really been kind of the guy in college football as far as quarterbacks go the last couple of years. He was held to zero touchdown passes in that yeah. game. Uh, so that, that was a little disappointing. But the Heisman Trophy winner, uh, Mr. Joe Burrow, had six touchdowns, five passing touchdowns, one rushing touchdown, yeah. also threw for 463 yards. So he was as good as advertised. Everybody expects him to go number one. Mm -hmm. What did you think about his performance? Man, he stood up to the test, and uh, when the lights turned on, he came to play. Uh, I was impressed. You know, he hooked up with Randy Moss' son a couple times, got a couple touchdowns out of him, and he showed the full gamut, man. He ran the ball, he threw well, and uh, long and short passes. It was great. Yeah, he was one of those guys that had been hyped so much. A lot of people have been saying this might be the greatest year by a college quarterback ever. The wow. GOAT year. That's what they've been saying. But he kind of lived up to it. And that uh, yeah. bowl game beforehand, he had six touchdown passes, I think, and one touchdown rush. Mm -hmm. And then in this game, he had five touchdown passes and one uh, on the ground. So yeah, may maybe it was the greatest season. Is he the greatest college quarterback ever? Could have been six. Yeah. I think they called him back, that. didn't they? They called one back. They also could have scored at the very end of the game when they just went ahead and took the victory kneel. Yeah. Uh, so he yeah. definitely had the opportunities to score more. Uh, and, you know, it started off as a close game, but ultimately LSU just dominated in the second half, and they deserve to be the national champions. Yeah. So what was interesting to me is just as exciting as the game was itself, we had a lot of fireworks come after the game. <laughs> So uh, yeah. one of those, actually both both of the events, uh, involved OBJ, Odell Beckham Jr., who was an LSU alum. Right. So in the first incident, immediately after the game, LSU celebrating, ODB, ODB, OBJ's on the sidelines cheering, pulls out a fat wad <laughs> of money and just starts handing it to the players. So they're, they're being interviewed on TV, He's here, here, here's some for you, here's some for you. Yeah. So what did you think about that? Obviously, we've talked about in the past, NCAA players are not allowed to get financial benefits or financial compensation beyond their scholarship and things of that nature. Right. So this is a, a rules violation unless you believe it was fake money, which is the, <laughs> the story that came yeah, out afterwards. Yeah, so what, what did you think about that? Uh, three words. Doing too much. <laughs> that sums it up. We know who you are. And it's it's evident that he's close with these guys. Right. The two guys that he gave money to on the field were both wide receivers. So I'm pretty sure he's mentored them. They were both juniors uh, over their careers at LSU. So it's like big bro or uncle giving you a couple of dollars, but you're a professional athlete. And the cam it was cameras <laughs> everywhere. Like, all around. They were trying right. to do an interview at that moment. Right, exactly. So it's like, you got to know where you are, when to do those types of things. That being said, I kind of think he did it on purpose. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, well, you know, that. he's Mr. Showtime. He likes the lights, and there's no such thing as bad press to some people. Yeah, well, maybe there's no such thing as bad press, because obviously Odell Beckham Jr. has been in the league for a while. He's not going to be harmed by any type of penalties that incur from that, right. uh, but the players, is something different. So yeah. these guys can lose their eligibility if it's proven that they receive improper benefits, and it's hard not to prove it when you do it in front of the camera. Like you said, he's on an interview <laughs> at that time. Back in the day, or so I've heard, boosters would come around, they'd drop a little envelope, or they'd give that handshake right. uh, with a couple bills in it, and that was the way they gave you the money. Odell Beckham Jr., I said, man, hey, we're in the Instagram <laughs> age now. Uh, everybody wants to stunt for the gram, so yeah. maybe that's what he was doing. But you got to do a little bit better. One thing that bothered me, though, and, and I wonder if our uh, viewers, if this bothered them, too. Like I said, Joe Burrow's been considered the likely number one pick in the draft. He's, mm -hmm. you know, people saying maybe the GOAT season of all time. But Joe Burrow snitched. 
when they said it was fake oh, money, yeah, he did. Joe Burrow went on a podcast and said, no, I was it's real. real. <laughs> <laughs> so he went on Pardon My Take and said, um, yeah, I'm not a student athlete anymore, so I can say, yeah, it's real money. So should Joe Burrow lose that number one draft pick <laughs> stock because he's snitching about the improper benefits? Uh, I don't know. That's a tough one. Snitches get stitches. <laughs> but, uh, you know, he wanted him to know he got that bag. So he's flossing for, for the gram. I don't know. It's a violation. If I'm a GM, <laughs> you look at how the Lakers did D'Angelo Russell when he pulled off the little phone uh, video, secret video deal. Yeah, they shipped him away. They shipped him away. If I got the number one pick, I'm shipping it away. I can't trust you, Joe Burrow. You, after you won the national title with your brothers, you dimed him out on the podcast. It depends on how bad I need a quarterback. I'll wait. If I'm the GM. <laughs> right. I'll wait. Hey, six touchdowns. Can't I, trust him. We'll pay you over the table. Don't worry about it. <laughs> can't Don't trust him. It. All we got to do is go in there and say he gave it back. Problem solved. Maybe so. I, th I thought the, you know, everybody knew the wink wink that it was fake money the same way 50 Cent said it was fake money when he got caught uh, <laughs> after he was in bankruptcy court <laughs> saying, oh, no, that, that money on the grandma was fake. <laughs> we, we get it. You got to learn to play along, Joe Burrow. You got to play along. Yeah. So another incident uh, surrounding the national championship. Hey, he with, was on the road that night. Right, with Odell Beckham Jr. <laughs> Odell, you tripping. Slow down. Um, he ended up, uh, actually this was on Thursday, mm -hmm. um, found out that there's a warrant been uh, put out for his arrest because he slapped a cop on the bottom in the locker room. So Melvin, what did you think about this? Is this just a cop overreacting? You know, is this just a locker room slap? It's what men do, it's what football players do? Or is there something more to it? Okay, I heard about the story before I saw the footage. And in my mind, I figured everybody was celebrating. And, you know, the cop was standing there being part of the festivities and gave him a good old attaboy. That is not what happened. <laughs> okay. So the cop was grilling one of the players for supposedly smoking something, maybe a cigar, in the locker room. And he uh, apparently had thrown the whatever it was, in a, in a soda bottle. So the cop was kind of getting on to him. Odell Beckham was standing behind the police officer. He wasn't even involved. He's just watching the situation unfold. And then he smacks the cop on the butt and starts singing the song. <laughs> the cop was clearly <laughs> upset. Like it wasn't a jovial moment at all. So I could, I could see him, you know, trying to figure out a way to handle that situation. But I think a warrant is a little bit excessive. Yeah, I think, I think it's nonsense. And I think it's nonsense for a couple of reasons. Number one, you said that this cop was harassing a player, or you didn't say harassing, I'm gonna say harassing, <laughs> a player about smoking a cigar in the locker room. But guess who else we saw smoking a cigar in, a, in the locker room, in the stadium, and they didn't have cops harassing them. And Joe man. Burrow, oh. the quarterback. Oh. He was walking around smoking a stogie everywhere. Wow. Nobody said a word to him. Didn't see that. Also, uh, the fact that he smacked him on the butt again, maybe it was a situation, maybe it was an inappropriate situation. He shouldn't have been doing that, but they just won the national championship. You're in a locker room. You need to have a cop on duty. Oh, they didn't gonna win the overreact. championship, though. It doesn't matter. <laughs> You're in that celebratory situation. If you can't handle your butt getting slapped in the locker room after a national championship, don't take that assignment. Now, I'm not for non consensual this and that. But it's a football game, I think the cop overreacted. To charge him with battery is excessive. Maybe you give him a warning and tell him, hey, look, I don't roll like that. But to charge him with the crime in that situation is ridiculous. And if it was Joe Burrow that had slapped him on the butt, you get where I'm going with this, I guarantee there would not have been an assault charge. Probably not. But my Definitely. mother always taught me. Keep your hands to yourself. <laughs> you stay out of this situation. How am I? <laughs> All right. So uh, that's what we got there. I know you wanted to go into another oh football gosh. player, who a uh, wide receiver who likes to trip. Uh, so what do you got there? Yeah, the Antonio Brown saga continues. And uh, he went live on Instagram, I believe it was, uh, videotaping an incident with him and some police officers. 
when his uh, child's mother came to his house. Supposedly, she tried to take the keys to one of his Bentleys, and he called the police on it. And he proceeded to say some uh, pretty horrific things in front of his kids and yell at the cops. And it's, once again, just doing too much. Yeah. If you're going to have that moment, keep it to yourself. That's my opinion. Yeah, he called the cops and then went off on the cops and went off on his baby mother. So, Antonio Brown, you're definitely tripping. Like, get some help. He also, he got dropped. His agent, uh, Drew Rosenhaus, who was one of the big-time big agents, time. you know, through all sports, he dropped him. He said, look, I can't represent you anymore. You're tripping. You need to get some help. And I think that's what the sports world collectively has been saying to Antonio Brown. You need to get some help. Personally, I think there's some CTE issues going on. Yeah. Uh, he's definitely been acting very erratically uh, as of late. Been in the news a ton. Uh, hasn't really been positive. So hopefully he can get some help with that. Somebody needs to reach out to that brother because uh, you're tripping, man. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's all we got this week. Unfortunately, you know, it's not positive, cheery news <laughs> like our uh, our last holiday segment. Right. Uh, but this is what's going on. Let us know. What do you think about these situations? Do you think Joe Burrow had the best uh, season of any quarterback in college football history? Do you think that Odell Beckham Jr. was tripping? Should he have gotten arrested or should he have gotten this warrant for smacking the cop on the butt? Or is it let boys be boys? And does Antonio Brown need to get some help? And I'm going to answer that definitely. Follow us, subscribe, and push that like button. We'll see you next time. Peace.